If you're looking for a city by the beach, then Da Nang could just well be exactly what you're looking for, but that's only the beginning. Come and check out the affordability of the accommodation. See for yourself how inexpensive and diverse the food options are. Just look at the weather, not bad eh? Do you work from home? Then you're in the right place in Da Nang as the Wi-Fi here is definitely a good speed. Of course if you're looking to connect offline, then Da Nang offers numerous opportunities for you to make friends with other expats, travellers and friendly locals. Ok, let's get started. I'm in Da Nang right now and I've made the decision to come and live here for a few months this year. In this video what I'd like to do is break my decision down into six reasons so you can see why you should come and live in Da Nang or at least visit when you can. Really quickly, I've noticed that many of you that watch videos on this channel haven't subscribed yet. Only 2.4% of you have subscribed. We've set a goal for this year to reach a minimum of 5% by the end of the year. But we need your help, we can't do that by ourselves. As the channel grows, we promise to always visit new places, keep travelling, share that information with you. So if you're looking for information, if you're looking for ideas of what to do, or if you're considering living in that area, if you've ever watched a video on the channel and it was of any value, please hit subscribe. Anyway, let's get on with today's video. You've just arrived in Da Nang and you want to get yourself set up with a nice place to live. Where do you start? There's a couple of options here. Initially, what you can do is either book yourself into an Airbnb or a hotel, give yourself a few days to have a look around and find somewhere. There's plenty of places to choose from that suit all budgets. Airbnb does tend to be more on the pricier side, but it's a great choice for shorter stays of say a few days up to roughly a month or so. What I did is book myself into a hotel for a few days in order to give myself a chance to look around and find somewhere. I then did two things. First thing I did was posted in one of the many Da Nang groups with my requirements. For example, I said what my budget was, what I was looking for, what facilities I needed, what my requirements were basically. And literally after posting within minutes, I got several messages coming through from people with photographs, videos, information about the different places. What you can actually do is then contact this person, get the phone number, arrange to go around, do a viewing. If you like the place, sometimes you could probably move in on the same day. If not the same day, definitely within the next few days. The second thing that I did was simply walk around the Anthong area just to get a feel for the neighbourhood. This is actually how I found my apartment. When I saw an apartment block that I was interested in, I went in, spoke to one of the receptionists and asked if they had any rooms available for monthly rental. Some of them didn't, but the ones that did, they took me up to the room immediately, let me have a look at the room and told me what the price was. I then checked to see if the bed was comfortable, also did a speed test to make sure that the Wi-Fi was fast enough to do some work, and I also made sure that I checked to see whether cleaning was included or not. Most of them included cleaning once a week. And the ones that I saw, there was an additional fee for electricity and for water. Da Nang is amazing in terms of accommodation. To be honest, there's nowhere at all that I've visited in Southeast Asia with prices as competitively priced as here. The properties that I've seen are really nice and they're really hard to beat. So there's definitely something available to suit all budgets. Right then, so you've got yourself set up with a cosy, well-priced apartment. Who knows, you might even have opted for a place with a balcony with a gorgeous sea view. There's plenty of apartments available like that if you take the time to look around. If so, then you'll only be a few minutes walk from the beach. Popular neighbourhoods such as An Thung or Sern Trat are literally just a few minutes walk to the beach. Mae Kay Beach has gained the reputation as the most famous beach in the area. Have a look for yourself, you can expect to find blue skies, smooth powdery sand and gentle waves. The beach stretches for miles, I think it's about 5 kilometres, so it's great for swimming, sunbathing or if you fancy a long leisurely walk along the beach, off you go. There's sun lounges available for rent and they're really, really well priced. Starting from 40,000 Vietnamese dong, only one and a half dollars and you can have the lounger all day. If you fancy being pampered on the beach, you can also 
treat yourself to a massage which costs around roughly $10 for an hour. Of course, if you're ever feeling a bit more active or adventurous, there's a few water activities available for you to choose from, such as jet skiing, surfboard hire for only $5 an hour, surfboard lessons and paragliding. I don't know about you, but I'm not really a fan of being on a beach that's overcrowded and you'll find just that here in Da Nang. On most days at any spot along the beach, you'll have no problem finding a quiet spot. Later in the day, at about four o'clock onwards, families, friends and groups of people tend to head towards the beach and the weather drops a little bit. The temperature, of course, it's a little bit cooler and it starts to buzz with a bit more activity. Over the years, Maykay Beach has gained several awards for being one of the best beaches in Asia or in the world. What are you waiting for? Come and see for yourself how beautiful the beaches are here. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. You're most likely also wondering about the weather. If you're planning to head to the beach or visit Da Nang sometime soon, you'll want to know when is the best time to visit. Like always, we all know that the weather is unpredictable. But as a general rule though, Da Nang weather can be split into two seasons, dry season and wet season. Typically, dry season runs from January to August and wet season usually runs from September to December. You can see here on these graphs what to expect in relation to temperature and rainfall throughout the year. If you're someone who likes it hot, then you can see that June, July and August are usually the hottest months, but March and April are still good options for good weather and less chance of rain. As I mentioned, September to December usually sees a higher amount of rainfall, but that doesn't mean it rains all day every day, obviously it doesn't. You can still expect decent temperatures and sunny days just with a higher chance of a bit rain. We all know that the digital nomad way of living is definitely gaining popularity year on year. One of the main factors that us nomads take into consideration when choosing a new place to live and work is of course the Wi-Fi connection, access to co-working spaces and cool places to work from such as cafes, coffee shops and restaurants. Da Nang is not only a paradise for leisure but it's a haven for anyone who is looking for ways to stay connected while doing a little bit of work. Whether it's reliable internet infrastructure and numerous co-working spaces and cafes, honestly you'll have no trouble staying productive while enjoying Da Nang's charm. Say goodbye to buffering and say hello to seamless connectivity. In addition to this, there's a few options available with regards to data sims. For example, when I arrived at Da Nang Airport, picked up a data sim for $11 and that was with Venaphone and it gives me unlimited data for 30 days. So it's a great option when you're out discovering Da Nang or if you run into an emergency when your apartment's Wi-Fi cuts out while you're working, you've got a backup. So far, fingers crossed, that hasn't happened to me during my time in Da Nang and let's hope it never does. You're probably also wondering whether Da Nang is a safe place to live. It certainly feels that way. It's highly regarded as a safe place for locals, for expats and for travellers. It does have a low crime rate and friendly and welcoming locals. Also, if you compare Da Nang to other major cities in Vietnam, such as Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi, this is definitely the safer choice out of them all. Although crime rates are low in Da Nang, I've heard that it's necessary to take precautions, like anywhere really. For example, crowded areas such as the Han River are more prone to pickpocketing. Just be mindful when you're in these areas. The other point that I think is important to mention, it's not a positive, but I want to raise it here. It's in regards to the safety on the roads. Traffic accidents in Vietnam are a major concern. There's a lot of motorbikes on the road throughout the country and in Da Nang. Just a word of warning, if you're not familiar with riding a motorbike in your home country, it's probably not the best idea to try riding a motorbike in Da Nang as you'd potentially be putting yourself and other people in harm's way. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the heart and soul of Da Nang. It's the people. Known for their warmth, hospitality and friendliness, both locals and expats contribute to the vibrant atmosphere in the city. 
Whether you're sharing stories with locals and eating a bowl of fur or connecting with fellow expats at community events, you'll feel right at home in Da Nang, I'm sure of that. And there you have it, six compelling reasons why Da Nang should be at the top of your travel or relocation list. From stunning beaches to a welcoming community, Da Nang really does offer an unforgettable experience. What are you waiting for? Get your bags packed, get yourself to Da Nang and enjoy the magic and see what it's like for yourself. And now, if you're looking for a few ideas about what to see and do while you're in Da Nang, you need to watch this video here. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.